Good evening, everyone. June 25th. Uh, where are we? 6.30 p.m.? January. Uh, Eastern Historical like Commission meeting. January. I'm sorry. Yeah, January 25th. Eastern Historical Commission meeting will now open. Great. Wayne, if you would, um, just introduce everybody to the Zoom concept here. Absolutely. Uh, uh, in keeping with the natural uh, relative to extending certain state of emergency accommodations, the meeting will be conducted remotely over Zoom. Attendance by board and commission members will be remote, and remote attendance shall count toward quorum. The meeting may be broadcast live and will be recorded on ECAT. And we uh, need roll call votes and um, roll call confirmation of attendance. Bob's, Bob's having remote. trouble. So, uh, I'm sorry I was talking over you, Tim. Did you say something about Bob? I'm periodically freezing here, Wayne. I'm not sure. Bob if just texted me. Bob says, "Hi, sir. I hear I'm hearing everyone, but no one hears me." Yeah. Well, Bob, you are on mute. Unmute sorry. yourself, Bob. Oh, or maybe that's the title of his autobiography. I don't know. <laughs> 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 hey, I'm sorry. Hey, I'm I'm getting lucky trying to get this far. It's okay. Right. You opened with a laugh. That always works. All right. <laughs> so if we could um have people go around and state their last name and the fact that they're present, so we can confirm a quorum. Early I. Francesco present. Bishop present. Strange Spen I. Spencer here. Sorry, Amy. <laughs> <That's> okay. <laughs> and Wolf present. Awesome. Thank you very much. And I understand that. Um, uh, oh, and we also need to designate um, alternates as voting members. So if we could have a motion, a second, and a roll call vote to designate Bishop and Wolf as voting members, please. So move, Strange. Wolf. Second, Hurley. No. Bishop, yes. Francesco, yes. Spencer, yes. Wolf, yes. Strange eye. Early, yes. Awesome. Thank you. And now I understand that um, Mr. Carroll, uh, I'm sorry, that Greg has another meeting. So we've rearranged the agenda a little bit. And uh, Ben Carroll is here to um, have an, sort of an early consult uh, with the commission about um, some possible plans for 2 Howard Street. And I sent around the um, inventory form from MHC as part of the advanced materials so people might be a little familiar with the property. And, and I appreciate you acquiescing to my schedule. Of course, absolutely. Keep it, keep it short. I, I do try. <laughs> uh, hello, Mr. Carroll, thanks for joining. Um, so, perfect, yeah, thank you for sharing the screen. Um, yeah, I'd like to tell the commission a little bit about um, you know, the property and uh, some of your preliminary thoughts for it. So hi, everybody. I'm Ben. Um, I recently bought to Howard Street in Easton. Uh, the house is about as old as it gets, uh, originally constructed in 1770. The Howard family in 1903 wrote a genealogy, a, a history of the family in a 454-page book that I found online. I'm trying to find an actual written copy because it was scanned in, looks like, sometime in the 90s. And uh, it's hard to decode, but it looks like this house was built by the third generation of Howards that have sort of settled this area um, in 1770. It was the first home of Elijah Howard. Um, the Howard family has, has went on to build uh, and develop a lot of what is now Easton and the Bridgewaters. Um, this house, one of the things I think is particularly interesting, um, and I have done sort of a good amount of small real estate transactions, is that this house was actually in contiguous ownership for one individual from 1946 uh, until they passed in 2020, which I think is is sort of a, a unique fact and explains in some ways the condition of the house that you're about to see. Um, so a aerial view of this, I don't know if this video will actually play. Is this coming in or is it just sort of grainy for all of you? No, it's coming in. All right, so I, I've taken a couple of photos. I'll try to keep this brief because I know there are other things before the commission. I just wanted to begin a conversation. But the house is um, essentially there's a center chimney cape out front, an old barn that's unfortunately begun the process of falling down in the back. Uh, the 
total site is roughly 10 acres of land. There's about 425 feet of frontage here. Um, and again, just at this point, the two structures, I'll show you some site maps or wetland issues throughout. Um, but this will give you sort of an idea for the area and the site that we're looking at. So the lot itself, if you can see my cursor, uh, extends behind this house. This is immediately the, the house that you're looking at in this photo is immediately to the right of 2 Howard Street and sort of cuts back in a large triangle following the power lines. And this is a the site plan from GIS, so it'll give you a good idea for sort of what we're looking at. If anybody has questions, please feel free to jump in. Um, and then this is a be beginning estimate of the site plan from, I had a botanist go out, sort of delineate the area, and a surveyor um, create a site plan of what's there. I don't know how this sort of middle chunk got left in that, that is not part of the property. Uh, but it just gives you an idea. It's a, it, it is a atypically shaped lot um, with the two structures existing where they currently sit. So this is a photo that shows you sort of how bad the existing condition of the barn is. Candidly, Tim, I, did I, you do that rehab? Right. <laughs> I, I think the barn's a little bit past, uh, or more than a little bit past being salvageable here. Um, but I, I think Howard Street, the, the house itself, could be. So here's, I wanted to start by showing you some of the good photos. You have these hand-hewn beams that seem to be in good shape really from the basement up. Um, it's kind of a large house for the era that it was built. It's about 1,500 square feet, two stories, relatively high ceilings on the first floor. So I think there's some potential for being able to flip this and and sell it as a, a modern home in an old, in an old shell. Um, just some additional photos of the existing structural beams on the second floor. And then sort of the bad stuff, right? These are the structural beams that you see in the basement. Um, you can see there's a stone foundation there. It looks like somebody in an effort to try to joist the house up probably without the efforts of an engineer had posted some lumber underneath existing pre-existing timber beams. You, know, you can see powder post beetles or termites have, have, have been through here. Um, so, so what we're looking at, is I think really just a major renovation of a house. And um, I it's it's a house that I think is small enough that it can be saved and I would like to save it. Uh, there's a house across the street in this area that it is a cape roughly the same size for sale. Um, but I do, I think it's a, it's a really significant undertaking to structurally save this house before you get into the sort of the details of flipping it to make it into a modern home that I think a, a family is going to want to move into an Easton when they're looking at sort of houses in a, in a newer price range. Um, so I think one of the things I'd like to talk about is really an interest in, is there an interest in trying to preserve this house? Um, and if there is, you know, I, I know that the commission had recommended um, a ZBA application recently at I believe, 149 Lincoln street for a um, smaller house lot to be allowed to sort of save to make it, I guess, financially possible to save an older home. Um, and I'm wondering if that's something that the commission would consider in this circumstance. Uh, another point of public benefit that I've been actually talking to the folks at the Bay Circuit Trail about is uh, if anyone here hikes, you, you, the Bay Circuit Trail is this amazing resource we have in Massachusetts that sort of bisects the whole state. In Easton in particular, a lot of our Bay Circuit Trail route is unfortunately on public roads, uh, which is, is less than ideal. And there's been a real effort in the past few years for developers to try to bring the trail onto private property and off of roads. And it actually comes right up Prospect Street. And so there, we're having some conversations about sort of rerouting it, potentially creating some public parking at this site uh, with trail access up and through the woods here, sort of rerouting it from underneath the power lines where it currently goes. And then of course, at the end of the property, which would actually be close to a half a mile of additional trail, you'd have to reroute back under the power lines, but it at least would give people on this side of town, I think, uh, a spot to go and park and access what I think is a very underutilized trail if you talk to the folks at the base circuit. So I think I threw a lot at you in about four and a half minutes. Um, questions, reaction? Uh, very compelling. There's nothing there I don't like. <laughs> may, may I jump in, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Have at it. So, so Ben... Um, Knowing what we, we, we being playing board, what we pushed for on, on Lincoln Street, what we brought to you guys, um, contacted me back probably Christmas time, I guess, went out, saw the house, 
pretty good shape for something that old. And um, there's, he showed that quick site plan. Most of this site is wet, but it has some great ideas with the base circuit shell. But there's about an acre and a half, it's about 60,000 square feet <clears throat> up at that top left there with, um, of uplands. So you think of it, in, to make a lot in Easton, we need 150 feet of frontage. He has plenty of that. Um, and 40,000 square feet of uplands. And I thought we really, we being all of us, historical planning, ZBA, we stumbled on a, a, a really good formula to help save these buildings. You know, we've, always, we've been trying to do this. Demo delay doesn't really work that well. But what we did with T&M up on Lincoln Street was great. They, 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 they sort of got a free lot, which allowed them the, the, let's face it, it's a business. They have to make money. No one goes to work to lose money. Um, but it allowed us to save a house. They kind of, kind of got a free small lot out of it. You know, Ben's plans here, we talked how given the house location, he'd have to move it. Moving a house is expensive. Um, it would have to be pinned up, short up where it's old post and beam. And by the time someone goes to do that, you really have to be, you know, you really have to appreciate um, his, historical homes and, and not want to live with any equity, you know. And so not many people do that. That's why we've seen they all get torn down and they put up something else. So if we could carve off a small 15 or 17,000 square foot lot here, like we did at Lincoln Street, that allows a new lot to be created where a house and, you know, Ben, I don't want to speak for him, but he, I said, hey, if we're going to carve off another lot, I think it would be nice if you let historical have a say sort of in the, out, you know, make the new house look sort of historical, kind of, you know, create a little enclave here, if you will. And at the same time, save a house in a part of town that hasn't had a lot of historical preservation. And a house is 1770. It would be great to hang on to. And, and right, Howard, I mean, it's one of the founding fathers of this town. So, um, so I, I thought it made, I, I recommended that he contact, you know, um, uh, Wayne and uh, Tim and, and come in and talk and, and try to get some support. Because I think it's, I think his ideas with the Bay Circuit Trail are great. Bay Circuit Trail are great. I think um, saving this house is fantastic. But I get, I mean, moving this house is expensive. Rebuilding it's even more expensive. But if he can carve off a lot, you know, I, I think it really, I think this is a good formula to, um, help preserve houses in town that way. And, and we've, we've laid the tracks on Lincoln street. And I think it makes sense to try to keep doing this. So anyways, that's my two cents for this. Okay. No, I, I agree with Greg. Um, we appreciate the effort of both planning board and you Ben. Um, and, and we hope, obviously you know, we always hope we save the houses. That's our, our, yeah. form, our foremost goal. So, uh, hopefully, you know, you, you, You'll stay in touch with us, and hopefully this goes through the uh, planning board process, and you stay in touch with us as well. I mean, everything you've everything you've told us is plus plus plus. So, um, anyone else want to add comments? I, I don't want to get deep into the roots here because, again, in the interest of time, and this is just a preliminary. But Ben, I just have a quick question. Uh, Absolutely. Are we talking about restoring the house more like uh, I don't know if you know the Dewey House that was uh, on Bay Road. It's the oldest house questionably in Easton, um, restoring it. I don't know what the inside looks like because you didn't have any interior photos. So if either it's pretty bad or you just didn't have the time to do it. But again, I know this is preliminary. So, think mini golf course, you know. I'm sorry? <laughs> is it think mini golf course, just elevation okay. of the floors. Yeah. Okay, all right. So are you talking about restoring it? Again, I don't know what the inside looks like. Is it like 60s type thing or is it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's like it's, 40s. Yeah, it's it's yeah. There's an old cast iron stove that'll take an act of Congress to get out of there. Um, but I I would like to update it to really modern standards. I mean, the the exterior of the house will I'd be more than interested in working with the commission to make it something that sort of fits and makes sense for the time period, right? I don't want to put you know vinyl siding on it. Um, but you know, I, I assume you guys also don't want to keep the existing aluminum <laughs> aluminum awnings that. Um, somebody clipped onto it at some point either. So there's, I think there's a happy medium there. And I think the yep. inside of the house is, I mean, this is something that I think to restore it, we're pretty much on the, from the inside anyway, tearing it down back to the beams. And Last the question, here. I promise. Is anything yeah. salvageable in the barn that can be used in this home? Or maybe, some, maybe some post and beams. Yep. Um, there's no way I was going in that barn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that barn is unfortunately a breeze away from falling. Um, that's that's probably not quite true, but it, it I don't think that there's anything legitimately salvageable in the barn. 
and I, you know, I, I had hoped there'd be a cool door or something that we could pull off of it to, to use, but I think the barn's just a little past the point of no return. If, if I, I just jump in for a second, you know, when I, when I met with Ben, I told him, I said, look at local historic districts, which are the strictest ways I said, still have to do with the exterior. I said, for historicals to support this, we would be looking for the exterior to be preserved in period materials, you know, wood, clapboard, shingle, whatever inside yeah. you can do what you want, you know? Um, but, and I did, I said, the barn heads, there's something great to pull out of there. Fantastic. But honestly, it really, I've never seen a building collapse like this. I mean, it's, I wasn't going there and I'm pretty daring with buildings, but <laughs> yeah, if there's a beam or two, it's always great to save something, but it's, my insurance doesn't cover uh, death. So we stayed out there. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming that uh, as you go for destruction on the, on the barn, that if you find something, you're going to consider saving it, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Anybody else? Nope, seeing none. Thank you, Ben. Appreciate it. Thank um, you very much. Yeah, stay in touch with us, please. I know through Greg, you'll be, you know, we'll hear from Greg as well. But um, any questions, please contact us. You know, Greg, Greg's a good asset for you at this point. So stay in touch with Greg and he stays in touch with us. I, yeah, I appreciate I mean, I think that. The game plan was, I said, come in, see, see the, see if the board, you know, I think what Ben's looking for is, obviously, you know, there's no proposal tonight, but to see if the board was okay, would do kind of support what was done on, on Lincoln street so that he can yes. spend, take the time and spend the money to hire an engineer, go come before planning. Well, and then he's going to do the same thing he's doing with you guys tonight. He'll do with planning and then we'll send him off to ZBA. You know? Yeah. I don't think it requires a, a vote of confidence here or maybe Wayne, do we, do we want to risk? Um, I, I, I think, think uh, yep. I, I don't know what the, um, where Mr. Carroll is on his timeline. Right. Uh, I remember that for the Lincoln Street proposal, the commission um, submitted a fairly generic letter supporting the concept of uh, granting variances um, for undersized lots uh, as a way to preserve uh, the historic home and um, appropriately rehabilitate the exterior. Um, so we could contemplate uh, drafting a very similar letter for Tim's signature. And then uh, as Mr. Carroll's uh, proposal or plans advance, he could return um, with more uh, more detail um, for input yeah. and, and guidance from the commission, if that would Yeah, this will, just, this will just prove to planning that we're on board with this so that it's not just your idea, Greg's idea, that they were also on board with it. So yeah, I would support a, a note on that part. Okay. Okay, so uh, with with uh, the commission, that. we assume and we assume the commission is okay with us doing that. Is that yeah? Anybody, anyone okay. opposed? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. So we'll do that. And then, Mr. Carroll, just a couple of other questions. Um. Were you contemplating an addition off the back of the 1770 house? Not at this time. Okay. And is there a central chimney and fireplace in there? There is. Um. Those are pretty rare. Is there any? Uh, possibility to preserve it it's interior of course not yeah that's subject. that's my goal oh okay. that would be awesome yeah Fair. wayne i promised ben that you would support that chimney as they were moving <laughs> and, you know i will show up and just like hold up each little brick absolutely okay. you can have every little clinker that falls off you'll get to keep <laughs> <laughs> souvenirs no, that's, no, they're such unique sure. unique regional things and uh they're oh, absolutely rare yeah. Yeah, yeah, and those bricks have. always come from bridgewater and the Howard family was in Bridgewater. So. We asked the same of Rick Lincoln on Union Street to work to preserve the chimney there. So anything we can do to do that would be great. Absolutely. And if, if anybody wants to come and walk through it too, please let me know. Happen to meet okay. over there. Yeah, I would. I would. I'll be in touch. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks for coming in, Matt. Thank you, Ben. Right. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ben. Absolutely. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Greg. You over and out. Yeah, I got a seven. I got a seven o'clock family event, so I have to go change and go. But uh, oh. is right. I don't ruin a quorum or anything, right? We're all good. No, no I think we're good. okay, right? We need uh, what four? I think. Yeah, we're good. We're good. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. All right. Thanks, thanks for coming. All right. Thanks, thanks for Greg. coming. Thank you. Um, I don't think we have anything else except the minutes from our last meeting. Um, and a uh, letter, um, a support letter for our application. Um, for the survey and planning grant for the town hall landscape. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, which was on the agenda which you read, yeah. 
Yeah, and then if you wanted to talk about the um, uh, center, uh, Eastern Center Monument. Okay, yeah, it was brought to me by Ed Hands, who I think also talked to John. There's a marker at the end of Center Street to the left. There's a stone wall, and right there is a marker. And I forget, what's it recognized, John? It's the anniversary of something. Or do you know, Wayne? Did you? Um, I The only thing I know about it, because I'm always driving when I go through there, is I yeah. went on Google Street View and um, to get a good look at it. And uh, it's um, on the church side of Center Street. Right. Right. Um, and you can sort of see it in there, but you know the resolution on Street View wasn't good enough. Yeah, I forget. It, it's 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 recognizing a fiftieth, one hundred fiftieth anniversary of of it may be the monument or whatever. I'm not sure, but the, the the thought is is to move it over by the monument, um, because you'll get killed if you stop there and try to look mm -hmm. at what's there. So we'll try to corral the two of them within within the fence of the monument, um, the the large monument. And hopefully this is a town project that we could just dig a footing and have the town pop it and bring it over and place it over there. I think I'll have to talk to the town probably the first thing at this point. As as historic commission, we are, whether you know it or not, we're also in charge of all the monuments in town. That's one of our charges. So uh, we do. I we do remember have... several years ago there was the Unionville monument over at the Correct. Unionville yes. um, playground. The old well, the old school it was in front of the old school, and then they moved yes, and then they so that was moved. And I don't know who actually did that. Was that a DPW project? They moved it to I, the Unionville Field. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. And then moved it around again when they put in the pickleball yeah. courts. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think they had pickleball courts going near the morning at this time. So it makes sense to move this because it's said as you said, Tim. I mean, no one's ever going to see that there. I mean, it's a safety concern for sure. Yeah, uh, I mean, even to get, I don't even know where you park to see the monument now. You have parked in the church parking lot. It's the only place to park. Yeah. They never accommodated any parking, so. I think it's just going to be a walking thing. Yeah, yeah. So anyhow. Um, so what do we do? Just uh, petition the DPW to get this done? Well, I think we need a vote. Is everybody in agreement here that that's. You know, I, I absolutely agree with this. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. So, so I'm hearing a motion and a second uh, to support relocating the Eastern Center Monument um, uh, to the uh, Civil War Memorial site. And yes. I'd be glad to go down, Tim, if you want. Uh, maybe discuss with DPW where it's going to go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we can take a walk around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Just not in front where we got hit. Where they got hit today. Oh, yesterday, wherever it was. God, they really were. Uh, has anybody seen it? I, mean, I have, they, yeah. They were, when you told me about it earlier, I drove by and I'm like, oh my God, somebody yeah. was like really cruising. Yeah, yeah. Um, do we need a vote on that, Wayne? I think it's just. So I'm hearing a motion and a second um, yeah, all right, to so. support the relocation of the center, Eastern Center Monument. Uh, to... You're moved. Thank you. You're welcome. Nice job, Iggy. Uh, do we need a vote? I guess we do, right? We need a second. I second uh, it. Thank you. Roll call. Early I. Francesco I. Fisher Fine. Aye. Oops, sorry. Roll five. Thank you. It's you, Mouse. Great. The other item is um, a letter of support from the Eastern Historical Commission for uh, the town's survey and planning grant application of up to $30,000 for the uh, town hall wayside estate landscape planning project. This is, as you know, we spent what, 1.4 million was it on the? 1.6, yeah, 1.4. Um, yeah, there's still uh, more to come in spring, yeah. Yes, you know, re I don't know if anybody's been up there, but it looks fantastic on the outside. There's a few more finishing touches, storm windows, doors, that kind of stuff, but it's basically complete. So now the idea is, uh, I think a new septic system goes in in the spring, and then they, I don't think you'll bring it back to where it was as, as when it was wayside with the big rose gardens, or whatever, but they want to do a nice, appropriate design. You know, they've taken all the trees that were just donut trees, just popped up here and there. Uh, it may look a little barren right now, but I think in the end it's going to be a beautiful site again, and that's what the thirty thousand is for—is to uh, get designs. 
Yeah, the um, town is applying uh, for a $60,000 CPA grant um, to do a public planning process for a rehabilitation design, you know, appropriate for climate change, resiliency, and maintenance uh, that's still appropriate to the estate. Um, and to that end, uh, we are we have been invited to apply for a survey and planning grant from the Massachusetts Historical Commission of $30,000. And um, one of the components is a, a letter of support from the Historical Commission. Um, so if people are amenable, a motion and a second to um, support the town's survey and planning grant application for the town hall landscape plan. Project. This is a no brainer. Uh, motion on the floor. I Seconded. So eloquently placed. Thank you. Roll call, please. Curly aye. Ventresca aye. Bishop aye. Wolf aye. Excellent. Um, we have not gotten any of the other potential applications, uh, so there's actually nothing to talk about on those. Um, we may get one for 123 Depot Street, um, in which case we will need to have a, uh, a meeting. Um, so we should mark our calendars for a potential meeting, and I believe our next scheduled meeting would be Wednesday, February 8th. So if people could reserve that, assuming we actually get an application. Okay. And then Tim, if we don't have any other business to talk about, uh, perhaps a motion yep. and a second to adjourn. We'll get to approve uh, the minutes. So the moved. Oh, so approve the minutes. Um, yes, yep. uh, motion to approve the uh, October minutes. Um, got a, a motion from Mickey. Second. second. Thank you. Roll call. Hurley, I. Francesco, I. Bishop, I. Well, fine. All right. Now, um, Wayne, before we uh, before we go through, uh, I was approached in reference to 285 Boundary Street. Uh, I believe the house is the last house in the Haywood Pool District. The sh shutters that were put on that house are way on period correct. Do we have any kind of say in that or is there something we when can look did into they go or... in and is it in the local historic district and um, things like that I, I don't know. Uh, if you uh, would like to reach out to me directly we can sort of chase down the facts of it. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anything else? Anybody? Hearing none. All in favor of adjournment? Need a motion? Motion, second, roll call. Really? Francesca, aye. Bishop, aye. Wolf, aye. Bishop, aye. And who is our motion and second for this? I motioned. Thank you. Ventresco seconded. Yeah. There we go. All and right. It is 704. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. Much appreciated. Uh, There's long meetings. I can't take it. All yeah. right. Thanks. Thanks for your patience and forbearance, everyone. Have a great okay. night. Thanks. 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 Than